Hey guys, welcome to another video for anatomy and physiology. In this video, I'm going to be highlighting the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is the largest endocrine gland in the body. Recall from a previous video that the word endocrine is referring to hormones that are being secreted into the body through uh, into the bloodstream or into ducts. The thyroid gland receives one of the highest rates of blood flow per gram of any other endocrine gland in the body. Now, when you consider two things, number one, the function of the thyroid gland, this will make a lot of sense, mainly because it's controlling just about every cell in the body, and number two, its location, and we'll, we'll look at the location in just a minute, but it's really close to, to the heart. So it receives one of the highest rates of blood flow per gram of any endocrine gland in the body. And it does this, it controls every, just about every cell in the body via three main chemical messengers, and these are all released by the thyroid now, as we look at the location of the thyroid, again, I want to highlight these three main chemical messengers because these are the three that we're going to talk about. The first one is T3, T4, and then calcitonin. So these are the three hormones that we'll discuss in class or in this lecture. So right now, let's go ahead and take a look at the location of the thyroid, just like I mentioned before. So before we look at the thyroid gland, I actually want to look at what controls the thyroid gland. Now you would think that the thyroid gland would be the 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 end all of of what we're talking about here, the endocrine system. But the endocrine system is actually controlled by the brain. Okay, the brain is basically the thermo thermostat for um, for for the thyroid gland. If you kind of think of a thermostat in your house, uh, you manipulate the thermostat, you control the thermostat, and the thermostat then controls the AC unit outside or or in your in your attic in the house. Uh, you know, you might think that the AC unit is the main part, but not necessarily. Or maybe you might consider some movies where, uh, in some movies where they, the good guy kills the bad guy that you've been getting to know throughout the movie, but then you come to find out that there's actually another different bad guy to get to get rid of, um, the main bad guy, if you will. Well, in, in this case, the, the thyroid gland is not the main, it, it is the main uh, mechanism in which the body uses to create homeostasis through the metabolic system. Um, but even before that, we have the anterior pituitary. And actually, we can even go before the anterior pituitary because, watch, if I remove this part of the brain, I reveal the inner, inner workings of the brain, the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus will release something called thyroid releasing hormone. And that TRH, thyroid releasing hormone, will then go down into the anterior pituitary and it will initiate the release of thyroid stimulating hormone. And so thyroid stimulating hormone will then go to the thyroid. So here I am at the thyroid now. And the thyroid look is located just above, just superior to the trachea and just inferior to the larynx. And the thyroid also lies, as you can see, it's, it's wrapping around the trachea and it lies in between the common carotid arteries and the internal internal jugular veins. Now, as I mentioned before, the thyroid gland is receives more blood flow per gram than any other endocrine gland in the body. And again, consider the fact that it manages the metabolism for the entire body, which means it's basically controlling the function of every cell in the body, which is, or for the most 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 cells in the body, at least those that are breaking down sugars and uh, um, you know glucose and, and lipids and what have you. So now the second part I mentioned is that, you know, when you consider the function, it makes sense, but also consider the location. Look how close the thyroid gland is to the heart. Let me remove my rib cage here, the sternum, and a couple of ribs so we can reveal the heart so you can get a better view of this. So let's hide that. Let's back up a little bit. So back to our thyroid gland now. So our thyroid gland is, is fed by our inferior thyroid arteries, okay? Let me zoom out a little bit. There they are. And as you can see, their their um, proximity to the heart, you know, the thyroid is is the first hormone, is the first is the first endocrine gland that receives uh, blood. It gets first dibs basically. And once the blood is uh, is used up in its process, it goes through the thyroid veins. And as you can see, it immediately gets drained into the heart. So here's the thyroid veins, and as you can see, it drains into the brachiocephalic vein and into the superior vena cava, the base of the vena cava, and then ultimately into the heart. All right, so let's return back to the thyroid gland, and actually, let's take a closer 
Let's take a closer peek inside the thyroid and its cells. Actually, before I go there, uh, I want to mention one quick thing that the thyroid, as you can see, has two, uh, two major lobes on the right and the left that wrap around the trachea, and these lobes are connected by what's called the isthmus. Okay, now let's dive into the, into the thyroid. Let's look at the cells. So I'm taking a look at the thyroid gland. We're looking inside of, with a microscope and we're looking at the individual thyroid cells. Okay, these are thyroid follicles. So each of these cells, the, the part that I have surrounded right now, the middle part, if you can kind of imagine a, a pool, you know, imagine a pool with the, uh, with the, brick, with the brick borders. The pool itself, the liquid, the stuff that's inside, uh, that's called the colloid. And that colloid is what stores uh, the, the thyroid hormones, T3 and T4. The follicular cells, which are the border around the pool, if you will, those cells are the ones that are responsible for making T3 and T4 cells. So again, they produce the T3, T4, and they get stored in the colloid. So those T3, T4 cells are called thyroxin. Okay, and that's T3, T4, that's triiodothyronine, and T4, tetraiodothyronine. So the three, tri, all, that's, all that means is that there's three iodines that uh, make up that molecule, and the tetra means that there's four iodines that surround that molecule. So the thyroid hormone, we want to now take a look at the function of the T3, T4 uh, hormone. These are the chemical messengers that the thyroid gland produces. One of their main functions is to control metabolism, right, homeostasis. So one thing to consider, like for example, when, it's, uh, when you're in a cold temperature area or if somebody's pregnant, one of the functions of the T3, T4, uh, what they do is they increase energy demand. They speed up metabolism, right? Because if, if, if a lady is pregnant, then she's going to need more energy. So T3, T4 are initiated to produce, um, to produce more energy. Okay, so, and they do that by speeding up metabolism, breaking down glucose or... Um, or, or fat tissue. So they essentially speed up what cells normally do, right? Cellular metabolism, homeostasis, your cells are doing that all the time, but T3 and T4, when, when, when this hormone is increased, it uh, speeds up what, what they normally do. So they produce more ATP, and this ATP is produced by, by breaking down lipids and also uh, initiating protein synthesis. All right, so breaking down glucose and fatty acids, lipids, like I was mentioning earlier. All right, so your, um, your thyroid glands, your follicular cells, 80% of the thyroid hormone that they produce is T4. T4 is not very active in the body, so your body tissues will, will take in T4, they'll break it down into the more active T3 uh, form of the thyroid hormone, of the thyroxin. So calcitonin's main function is to maintain homeostasis of, you named it, calcium, calcitonin, right? So it has two main functions, two main ways that it, uh, it maintains homeostasis of calcium. Number one, it inhibits osteoclast. And number two, it stimulates osteoblast. So let's say, for example, that your bloodstream has way too much calcium in it. Okay, So you have way too much calcium, and this is where calcitonin will come into play. Calcitonin. So look at that, that last, those last two letters, N. So it keeps calcium in the body. So what it will do is, again, it will initiate osteoblast. Osteoblast, when they're stimulated, will take calcium in the bloodstream and redeposit it back into the bone. Keep it for safe, uh, keep it, you know, it's like you deposit money in the bank. It keeps it, uh, it keeps it safe for safekeeping for future use, osteoblast. So it stimulates osteoblast, and it also inhibits, or, or by doing that, it then decreases calcium levels in the blood. In addition to that, it also inhibits calcium absorption by the body, by mainly the kidneys and the intestinal system. So instead of the body absorbing the calcium that you've digested, it allows your kidneys to, to excrete it from the body by urination or by defecation. Okay, so now again, just to kind of review this idea, calcitonin keeps calcium in, right? So it inhibits osteoclast, it, so osteoclasts are what break bone apart, or break uh, uh, by, break bone apart by uh, detaching calcium from it, calcium ions, and it, it stimulates osteoblasts by depositing calcium back into the bone. And we're calcitonin.
keeps the calcium in the bone. Alright guys, well that does it for our video for the thyroid gland. And I want to thank you for watching and listening. I hope this helped and good luck in your studying.